Hello students, welcome to Biosmart Academy. In today's lecture, we will going to discuss the Gate Life Science 2021 memory based question. And this is the part 2 of our discussion. We already discussed some of the question in our part 1 of the lecture. And there we also discuss uh, basically the predicted cutoff for this time that is for Gate 2021 Life Science. Okay. So now let's discuss the question paper. Okay. See. This is a question basically came from the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Actually, this is a numerical and this is the simplest numerical. This is basically of one mark question. Okay. So, how it's solved? So, it is basically uh, said that, that the snake population, that the snake population is in Hardy-Weinberg uh, equilibrium in, uh, present in an isolated island and the allylic frequency that is capital A is given as 0.6. Then we have to calculate the capital A small a. Okay, we have to calculate. So basically, what happened in this question? The capital A is given. Okay, that is the homozygous dominant is given, and we have to calculate the heterozygous. Okay, so you know that the formula is P plus Q equals to 1. Okay, so if we consider P is equals to A, capital A, a here, then what will be the Q? So if p plus q equals to 1 then p is given as 0 0.6 uh, plus q equals to 1 then q equals to 1 minus 0 0.6 that is 0 0.4 that is 0 0.4 okay so basically here the uh, small a value is basically came as 0 0.4 okay so we know that p capital p small q is just equal to capital a small a okay so we know that 2 pq you have to calculate 2 capital a small a therefore 2 into capital a is 0 0.6 and this small a is 0 0.4 that we already calculated here that is 0 0.4 and if we add all this then the final answer that came is uh, sorry, if we uh, multiply all these, then the final answer, answer that basically came is 0 0.48. Okay. So, the answer of this question is 0 0.48. I just write it here. Okay. That is 0 0.48 will be the allylic frequency of the heterozygous capital A small a. 0 0.48 will be the answer. Clear? Next question. This question is basically asked in the uh, zoology section. This is also for one mark question. Okay. The question uh, asks is that in adult athlete muscle grow bigger when exercise and are capable of regenerate after injury. Okay. That is after injury the muscles are regenerate. So what is the reason uh, behind this? That this, this is due to the proliferation and differentiation of which cells? This is the question, okay, that is an adult athlete, muscles grow bigger when exercise and are capable of regenerate after injury. So, this is due to the proliferation differentiation of which type of cells? So, the correct answer for this question is satellite cells. Satellite cells, okay. So, students, what are these satellite cells? These satellite cells are also called muscle stem cells. Muscle stem cell. Okay muscle stem cells clear and these are also precursor to skeletal muscle cell these are the precursor these are the precursor these are the precursor these are the precursor to skeletal muscle to skeletal muscle cell muscle cells clear so these are basically satellite cells okay so these are basically a stem cell okay that is the muscle stem cell uh, and from this the skeletal muscles can be formed so the correct answer for this question will be the satellite cells okay next question in hepatocyte detoxification occurs in simply we know that in hepatocyte detoxification is occur in smooth endoplasmic reticulum or ser okay so basically SCR in the hepatic cells are the major site for removal of xenobiotics. For removal of xenobiotics, okay. 
xenobiotics clear and which enzyme play an important role for this that is the enzyme that play an important role is cytochrome p450 which is present in the acr okay that is cytochrome p450 okay and the cytochrome p450 is present in the acr present in the acr and this cytochrome p450 catalyzes the reaction catalyzes the catalyzes the reaction okay clear and remember one thing students is that cytochrome p450 is a heme protein is a heme protein heme protein the other example of heme protein are catalase okay uh, as you know that catalase is basically uh, uh, the enzyme of peroxisome it basically uh, uh, oxidized h2o2 okay similarly cytochrome c is also a heme protein which basically uh, play important role in electron transport chain okay and also myoglobin and hemoglobin as you all know that are heme proteins similarly cytochrome p450 is also a heme protein it basically what it basically do it basically catalyze the reaction catalyze this reaction that is it helps in removal of this xenobiotics okay Through, uh, and the process that it basically occur is the hydroxylation hydroxylation okay hydroxylation clear and another one thing is that this cytochrome p450 is also a mono oxygenase is also a mono oxygenase is also a mono oxygenase okay what do you mean by mono oxygenase mono oxygenase means it has the capability to incorporate a single oxygen atom single oxygen atom into the substrate into the substrate it incorporates single oxygen atom into substrate okay then the reaction that is occur suppose uh, this is a reaction rh okay this rh is basically xenobiotics plus o2 this uh, basically uh, cytochrome p450 basically incorporate this oxygen as a result two protons plus two electrons and then it gives rise to the hydroxylation process that basically occur that it basically it makes the lipophilic uh, form of the xenobiotics into the hydrophilic form actually the into the uh, hydroxylation form okay that is the xenobiotics become roh after this reaction plus h2 is released and this is released uh, through kidney as a result the xenobiotics is basically removed from the body so in this way the cytochrome p450 play important role in removal of the xenobiotics so the answer of this uh, question will be smooth endoplasmic reticulum so please note all these things because this may be asked in the next time in the examination okay now the next question condensin and cohesin okay belongs to so the answer of this question is smc so condensin and cohesin belongs to smc so what is smc smc is basically structural maintenance of chromosome okay just note it down structural maintenance structural maintenance of chromosome clear structural maintenance of chromosome okay so condensin and cohesin belongs to smc that is structural maintenance of chromosome clear now smc is basically what smc is basically a chromosomal atps please note it down it is basically a chromosomal atps clear now next now we should know what about the condensin and cohesin so what is condensin and what is cohesin so basically condensin makes chromosome highly condensed okay so condensin is basically what it does it condensin okay condensin basically makes chromosome highly condensed highly condensed okay while 
cohesin what does it do cohesin basically link together sister chromatid immediately after replication it linked sister chromatids it linked sister chromatids immediately after replication okay immediately after replication clear so basically smc is structure maintenance of chromosome actually smc is nothing but it is a chromosomal atps clear here and here the condensin basically makes chromosome highly condense while cohesin basically links sister chromo chromatid sister chromatid immediately after replication it link the sister chromatids okay now here another thing that i want to uh, explain you that in condensin okay in condensin if i write down here in, uh, more clearly condensin condensin smc2 and smc4 play a important role with plus some non smc protein okay so condensin smc2 and smc4 just remind it okay with plus some non smc protein non smc protein smc protein and this non smc protein are h g and d2 okay so basically this is our condensin and in cohesin please note down cohesin smc1 smc1 and smc3 play important role okay with some non smc protein non smc protein with some non smc protein and these are ssc and sorry scc1 scc1 and scc3 okay so basically these smcs are play important role in case of condensin and in case of cohesin so in condensin SMC two and four with non SMC protein at G and D, while in cohesin SMC one and three with some non SMC protein SSC one and SSC three. Okay, I will teach more about these things when I teach you the metaphase chromosome in details. Okay, in our YouTube channel. Okay, next. This is the last question that I want to discuss. Is that this question is came in um, MSQ in biochemistry section and is of two marks. This question is very simple. That which one of the following are the epimer of glucose? Okay, so there are four options. So the two options that are correct epimer of glucose are D glucose and D mannose, and D galactose and D glucose. Okay, we all know that epimer is basically we identify with respect to the carbon position. With respect to the carbon position. With respect to carbon position. Okay, clear. So we all know that D glucose and D mannose are basically differ with respect to C two carbon, while D galactose and D glucose is differ with respect to C four carbon. So that's why these are the epimer. Okay, clear. I already make uh, videos on the biochemistry playlist about all these things in details. You can watch that. Okay. So students, these are the some question that basically I want to discuss with you some memory based question. So if you like this video, then please share, please uh, hit the like button. And another very important information is that we uh, already uploaded many lectures of biochemistry. Okay, and we going to start structures of protein. Okay, so please subscribe our channel. We put more and more videos here for CSI June twenty twenty one, and you definitely get benefited from this video if you watch it regularly. Okay, please share, please subscribe if you like the video. Till then, thank you.